Thank you. Good afternoon, class. I am Dr. King, Dr. Barbara King, and I will be your instructor for this class, Kingdom Application. Um, I know that you've been, I think you had a test. You just had a test on Monday? Today, you had a test today? Yeah, it started it start today for the rest of this week. They have all week to take it. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna believe God with you that you're gonna pass it with flying colors. Hallelujah. We're gonna go ahead on and get started. <clears throat> We're gonna pray and just uh, believe God that all that is being instructed is gonna be taken to heart and we're gonna be able to apply it to our lives. So Father, we thank you God for this opportunity to invest in the lives of your people. Lord, I yield myself to you, to the Holy Spirit, that he will speak to me and speak through me, Lord God, and that the ears of your people will be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say in Jesus' name. Let it be with simplicity and clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. As you can see from the style of the class, this um, that it is progressive. You first started uh, out learning about uh, the concept of a kingdom and understanding the kingdom. And then you went to embracing the kingdom where um, you actually begin to put yourself in that kingdom. You begin to own it. And now here at this juncture, we're going to talk about kingdom application. Okay, in the embracing the kingdom, you started learning about some principles. In this course, you're gonna to continue to learn about some principles, but these principles are gonna be principles of application, okay? So let's just do a quick review of the principles that you learned in the last course. And perhaps this will help for those that are um, still studying for the, uh, for the exam. Principle number one, the way of the kingdom is love. Principle number two, the condition of the ambassador is a direct reflection of the king. Principle number three, it is the responsibility of the kingdom to provide for the ambassador. Principle number four, the ambassador of the kingdom always relay the will of the king. Principle number five, it is the responsibility of the kingdom to protect the ambassador. Number six, the kingdom is responsible for educating the ambassador. The kingdom, number seven, the kingdom ambassador speaks with the authority of the king. Number eight, the kingdom ambassadors are not subject to the condition of, the, of, where, of where he serves. Principle number nine, um, the currency of the kingdom is faith. And number 10, the standard of the kingdom is righteousness. Hallelujah. So now that we've done that short review, um, can anybody tell me, just give me a definition because this is one that has been going, is gonna be uh, one that we need to know throughout these courses. What is the definition of principle? It is a systematic law. This is Greg Phillips. It's a systematic law that's universal that goes throughout any territory or system. Amen. Okay, you're going to have to know that for your test, and you're going to need to be verbatim. Okay, a systematic law that is universal throughout a particular territory. Amen. Let me turn this off before it comes. Somebody call. Thought I had turned it off already. I'm sorry. It keeps buzzing. Okay. All right, so in this course, course, we're going to be talking about kingdom laws and privileges. That's at the top of the pro, at the top of your page. Kingdom laws and principles. And to do that, we're going to have, we're going to be referring to our constitution. So let's just define uh, what a constitution is. It's at the top of the page. Constitution, the established agreement containing the laws, rights, and privileges of all citizens. So your blank is constitution, the established agreement containing the laws, rights, and privileges of all citizens. 
Now, the contents of this constitution is not unlike the contents of our United States Constitution in that it lays out the laws, the rights, and the privileges of all citizens. However, there are some distinct differences. In the constitution of this kingdom, um, it talks about the rights and the privileges of all the citizens. It specifically says the citizens, unlike the constitution of the United States. The constitution of the United States allows undocumented uh, immigrants to enjoy some of the uh, privileges and, and rights uh, as the citizens do. Now, the, that's, that's the content, but it, the, um, also the establishment of the, uh, this constitution is different from that of our United States constitution because the, the United States constitution, the people get to vote. But in this constitution, it's not, it does not, the, um, the king is, is by his will. It's the king is not voted into this position. It's by his kill, by his will. Also, you'll note that in the uh, definition, it says nothing about religion. In the definition of our constitution, it says nothing about religion. This is a governmental document and it defines governmental intent and established governmental law. Okay, Dr. Miles Monroe says at the top of the page, he says, the word of God written down and printed in the book we call the Bible is the most powerful document we have. That's a bold statement. It is the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. It is a royal contract. It is used to set the boundaries and reveal the benefits. By the way, do you all have your book? Have you gotten your book for this course? If you have it, if you have it, then um, I would advise that you begin reading it. It's a very good, very informal, very informal, um, informal book, and uh, the information is phenomenal. Uh, also, um, if you haven't gotten it, I would advise that you uh, get it soon. Also, um, now, when we talk about boundaries, Dr. Moreau is talking about boundaries. When we talk about boundaries, we are talking about expectations, okay? I can't expect anything, I, I'm looking for my Bible. I can't expect anything outside of the boundaries that's been set forth in the document. Now, when we talk about our constitution, we're talking about the word of God. That is the constitution of this kingdom. Now, we can't expect anything outside of what's documented in the constitution, in the document. To do that, to expect anything would be uh, unfounded and unrealistic. But the opposite is also true. Everything that's written in the document, we can expect. If it's in the document, we can expect it, okay? Uh, all of our rights and privileges and promises are made known in this document. So that says that we need to be familiar with the document. If we are going to know what our rights are, what our privileges are, we are we're going to know what laws govern this kingdom, then we need to be familiar with the Constitution. And when we think about our rights in the United States Constitution, oftentimes we, uh, our rights are violated and we don't even know it because we're not familiar with the document. Let's not that, let that not be true with, with this document uh, of this kingdom. Because when your rights are violated, um, then you find yourself on the opposite end of the law. Sometimes you can, uh, you can lose privileges that you're, because you're not aware of them, okay? So let's look at the uh, first principle for tonight. And it's gonna be principle number 11. And it says, the power of the kingdom is released through the spoken word. So that's the power, that's the first blank of the kingdom is released. That's the second blank through the spoken word. Yeah, this principle necessitates the involvement of us. We have to be get involved in this. 
Because we partner with God, it is necessary that we become, we be involved with this. We have this uh, affirmation at Heavenly Hope and uh, a part of it says, uh, the word of God coming out of our mouth, out of my mouth is just as powerful as the word of God coming out of his mouth. The word could be powerful. But if we don't release it, then what happens is we, the, the power that's in the word stays concealed. It's not that the word is not powerful, but we cannot remain silent because the, that is also true. If we continue, if we remain silent, then the power that's in the word stays trapped in the word because it's only released through the spoken word. So who's responsible for releasing the power in this kingdom? Any student? Can somebody tell me who's responsible for releasing the power in this kingdom? We are. That's right, we are. It's not God's responsibility to release the power in this kingdom because God is in heaven. He has given us dominion over this realm. So we are responsible for releasing the power. If the power is not released, it's because we are not saying what we should be saying. He has given us dominion. Remember our Amanda Smoke Sausage um, scripture, Genesis 1, And God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. He has given man uh, power in this realm. The first point under this principle is authority. And authority always flow the blankets down. And as the top authority, we release it when we speak. We are the top authority in this kingdom. We get to release the power. So what is authority? It's the power or right to give orders, to make decisions and enforce obedience. Authority is the power or right to give orders, make decisions and enforce obedience. And that's what we've been given as citizens of this kingdom. And by the way, um, it, when, you, when, you, when you're studying the word of God, you will find that we are called uh, citizens. Uh, we're called sons. You know, at, at one point we were called servants, uh, but we found out that we are no longer servants, but we are now sons. If just because we see citizens in, when we're talking, when we're talking about kingdom and lordship and we see citizen that does not negate the fact that we are sons okay let's look at matthews 8 5 5 through 10 can i get a reader amen matthew chapter 8 verse uh, 5 through 10 yes please now, when Jesus had entered into Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having uh, soldiers under me and I say uh, this to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it and when Jesus heard it he marveled and said to those who followed surely I say to you I have not found such great faith not even in Israel glory to God hallelujah now here is um, a centurion 
He is uh, uh, an officer in the Roman government who himself is under authority. And he has men that are under him. Now, research shows that a centurion is one that was uh, had at least 100 men under him. So he understand the uh, flow chart, so to speak. So he said to Jesus, I have a servant that's ill. Jesus said, he didn't ask Jesus, he just made the situation known to Jesus. Jesus said, I'll come heal it. He said, no, no, Lord. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just speak the word. Because he understood that a man in authority can speak a word and that thing that's up under him would have to obey because he too was a man under authority, with authority. The Holy Spirit is so careful uh, in the accounts that he choose to record for revelation that uh, this man was a Gentile. So authority not only flows just in the kingdom like that, it also flows like that in the secular world. In the secular world, it's called the chain of command. The person at the top gives the authority to the, uh, has the authority to release instructions or directives to the person under them, and then they have the authority to release instructions or directed to the person under, under them. So what that says is that um, um, as he understood his authority, he also understood Jesus' authority. He said, just say the word. But he also understood that it couldn't happen without him saying the word. He had to release that power through his spoken word. Now, if somebody had turned for me with, uh, to Matthews 8 and 16, if, if you have the amplified version, that would be perfect. Does anybody have it? If not, I have it right here. Yes, I have it. Okay. When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons and he cast out the evil spirits with a word and restored to health all who were sick, exhibiting his authority as Messiah. Glory to God. Amen. So we see that he not only, he not only had authority um, over the sick, he also had authority over the demons. He was able to release hit that power by casting out that demon, um, which is a whole nother realm. That's a whole nother realm. So Jesus also had authority over realm and he exercised his authority the same way. The same word that was spoken in the beginning when there was nothing and God said, let there be, let there be light. That's the same word that Jesus used to cast out the demon. And guess what? That's the same word that he has given us the authority to use. Now, just like if we use our authority, and I think I said it before, we use our authority, we release the power of the kingdom, but we also keep the power of the kingdom concealed when we remain silent. You know, there is a cliche that says silence give consent. So those things that are, um, that are uh, around us, those things that we become aware of that does not line up with the word of God or the will of God. If we remain silent about it, we give consent to it because we can release the power of the kingdom with our spoken word. We just let the stuff happen. The next point uh, under this principle is, I can't receive the promises of God unless I agree 
with God, with my words. So your blankets agree. I can't receive the promises of God unless I agree with God with my words. So if somebody would get Proverbs 18, 20, and 21, and then somebody get 2 Corinthians 4, 13. If you get, if you get 2 Corinthians, try that in the Passion, please. Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. Mm -hmm. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Glory from, the pro, uh, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Amen. Death and death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Amen. That word satisfied sticks out to me in that in that um verse. That when you satisfied, to be satisfied means that you have you are full, you have you have plenty. And that comes by way of speaking it. To be satisfied from by the, from the it comes from the fruit of your lips. If you're not saying, if you're not getting what you what the word promises, that means you're not saying what it says. And oftentimes we we want to um uh, we want to quote scriptures and we don't have a revelation on what the scripture is. Again, it goes back to um the document the boundaries of the document of the document the expectation we can expect the scripture to produce what the scripture promises if it's if it's within the confines of the document we can expect it but if it's outside of the confines of the document then our expectation is unrealistic so we have to have revelation on what god is saying we don't expect god to do what he has not promised Glory to God. Um, did somebody get 2 Corinthians 4 and 13? Uh, yes, I have. In the Passion Translation, will you read it for us, please? I, I have it in the King James. Oh, that's fine. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Hallelujah. We believe and then we speak. We believe and then we speak. So um, it's, it's almost as if one depends on the other. Right. If we believe, we will speak. Man. We are speaking that which we believe. If we're having a problem with our belief, then we're going to have a problem with us speaking. Hallelujah. We believe, therefore we speak. This is what the Passion Translate said. We have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scriptures when it said, first I believe, then I spoke in faith. So we also first must believe and then speak in faith. The scriptures will bring faith to us. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. One of the designs of the scripture is to produce faith in us. And so when we are when we are believing what the word of God says, then that's what prompts us to say what the word of God says. Okay, let's look at Luke 17:6. 17:6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now this, remember, we're talking about receiving the promises of God. Uh, we must agree 
with our words. Luke 17 and 6. Anybody have it? And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Oh, Glory to God. Now, I believe that Jesus was, uh, that the scripture was saying that uh, the power, the power that's in faith is not determined by the amount or by the size. The Bible says that God has yeah. given to every man the measure of faith. So I don't believe that, that the uh, amount of faith, I believe that he is saying here that is the amount of faith is not, is irrelevant. The amount of faith you have is irrelevant because um, faith in any measure is full of potential. All right, man. Um, let me let me use this example. I don't know uh, if we have any cooks on the line or bakes bakers on the line, but uh, when you when you're ready to uh, prepare a, a a cake, if you this this is say we're gonna make us a cake here tonight, and we're gonna first we're gonna collect our uh, ingredients and we'll collect our utensils. And we'll, 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 okay, part of our utensils would be a bowl. We're going to take all of the ingredients and we're going to put them all in the bowl, just like the directions say. Okay, we're putting everything in the bowl like it's saying. We're going to whip it up real good, you know, get some consistency in there. And then we're going to grease our pan. We're going to put it in the oven. Now, when it goes in there, it's liquid. When it comes out, it's a solid. It's because that's what we want. We're looking for the cake. But then we're going to take a piece and we're going to enjoy it. Everybody in the house get a piece and, and, and nothing's left but the crumbs. How much of the ingredients that's in the cake is in the crumbs? Anybody? All of it. All of it. Just because it's a little bit, just because the crumbs are left, doesn't mean that any of the ingredients are missing the same amount of ingredients that's in the cake or in the crumbs. So Jesus is saying here, the same amount of power that's in big faith, as you would say, quote, is the same amount in little faith. It's all, it's all full of potential. Okay, now let's look at um, James 5 and 17. I want to do that in two different versions. It's the, um, the Passion Version and the Amplified, please. Okay, nobody doesn't have it. I can read it. I have it. Does somebody have it and would like to read? Okay. I have the Amplified. Okay, that's fine. Elijah was a man with natural like, Elijah was a man with a natural like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. And he prayed intensely for it not to rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Dr. King, I have it in the Passion. Elijah was a man with human frailties, just like all of us, but he prayed and received supernatural answers. He actually shut the heavens over the mm. land so there would be no rain for three and a half years. Oh, Hallelujah. Now, this is a man, and he had the ability to shut up heaven. He shut up heaven so that it would not release any rain for three and a half years. Now, tell me from either one of those translations, 
What did the Elijah have that, that we don't have? What did it say that he had that we don't have? The scripture said that he was a man like us, human frailties. But he used his faith. That was the thing. He used it. There was absolutely nothing different than him than us. But he used what he had. He believed God. So much so, he's prayed and closed heaven up. And then he prayed again and it opened. So if, it's, if, if it applied, if Elijah, if faith could work like that in Elijah's life, that says that it works like that in my life too. It, it, it clearly says that Elijah was a man with a nat, with a man with natural like ours, with a nature like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. So that wasn't a factor. The fact that he was just a human being was not a factor. He had frailties too. but he believed God. Hallelujah. Kingdom principle 12. Let's look at the next principle. Kingdom principle 12, the communication, that's the blank, the communication of the kingdom is prayer. The communication of the kingdom is prayer. Notice that the principle says communication and not conversation. It says communication. Now the difference between conversation and communication is conversation is an exchange of words. While communication is the transformers of thoughts and words into meaningful action. So do we want to communicate or conversate with God? Because prayer is about accomplishing things. It ain't just about going, talking and saying, you know, just, uh, just conversate. It ain't just about exchanging words. Prayer is about coming to get things accomplished. I would, I, 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 let me just, I'm gonna give you this right here. It ain't gonna cost you nothing. Um, Dr. Young taught us uh, as leaders, I don't know, some years ago when we were in uh, Baker, he was teaching the leaders on how to study the Bible. And uh, he is a, a Rubik cubic, Rubik cubic, uh, a Rubik cube uh, fan. So he told us, and this is a more about my teaching style than the, than the lesson, I'm just, I'm just veering off here for a minute, but he told us, he said, and maybe this will help you in your studies. He said, uh, whenever you're studying the word of God, you got to look at it from every angle. So uh, like, like a Rubik's cube, you, if it's an image on it and you're trying to, you're trying to get the image uh, to line up, or you're trying to get the, 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 the full picture of the image. Sometimes you have to turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it. If it's colors, you got to turn it until all the different colors line up. So in studying the word of God, not only do you, um, not only do you have to consider what it's saying, you also have to consider what it's not saying. Okay, so uh, 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 hopefully that'll help you. It really blessed me in my life. And that's why I was saying uh, for, in prayer, the definition specifically says that 
The communication of the kingdom is prayer. Because we want to accomplish things. We want to get things done. We're not just going here. We're not just going before the king to conversate. We're going because we want to get some things accomplished. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. All right. The point, uh, the points under this principle are number one, prayer is not a religious duty. Feel that in your blank duty, but it is a responsibility. Prayer is not a religious duty, but it is a responsibility. Now, duty um, is more like a, uh, an imposition, like something's being imposed on you. But responsibility has to do with accountability. I remember way back when in the days when uh when we uh when we used to have to pay dues in the church and it wasn't uh tithes and offering it was dues it was that had that was imposed on us by those that were in authority over us that was a duty But when I learned about tithes and offerings, then it became my responsibility. I became accountable. Number two, prayer means petition. A petition is a legal, that's what the blank is, legal act to address a government head to make sure the rights are not violated. So first, prayer is not a religious duty, but it is a responsibility. And two, prayer means petition. And a petition is a legal act to address a government head to make sure the rights are not violated. And then number three, prayer is a legislative session where the representatives meet with the government head to establish the interests of the government and present the need of the people. It's a legislative session. It's not a time to be emotional. It's an opportunity to declare your rights. Remember, it's a legislative setting. It's a legislative setting. We're coming before the king. And we're coming not based on our emotions. We're coming based on our rights. What rights does the constitution say we have? And we're pleading our case based on the rights. When you start reading Dr. Monroe's book, uh, you you are gonna you're gonna find out uh, his uh, what he's saying about this kingdom concept. This is all about a governmental session. This is a, you are coming into a legislative session where they are talking about rights and privileges and and power. It's not a time to come crying. When the legislative uh, is in session uh, down, downtown, they don't, go, they don't go up in there crying about what they want to see happen. They get kicked out the room. Let's look at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This is what our constitution says in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, King James Version said, be careful 
for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It say, don't be, be careful for nothing. That's no thing. But we are to bring our bring everything to God in prayer, everything. And the Passion Translation says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God and overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. One other scripture I want to read in regard to that is, the, is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and it simply says, pray without ceasing. That means that, we, that, that, that there's always a session available to us. We don't have to get in line. We don't have to make appointments. We don't have to get on a waiting list. A session is always available to us. We just have to take advantage of it. One of the things as believers that I have found, and this is my own personal life, is the uh, lacking in prayer. That's an opportunity to come before the king. And the enemy does everything to keep us from meeting with our king, bringing our requests before him. And we see evidence of it in our world. Lord, forgive me. Kingdom principle number 13. The strength of the kingdom is unity. The strength of the kingdom is unity. The first blank is strength and the last one is unity. Now, here's a, this principle here is where we get an opportunity to go straight into the devil's camp and take back what he stole from, from us. Because when we apply this principle, unity, we actually disarm division. We get to decide that we're gonna walk in unity. You know, I was speak, talking to one a uh, lady, a friend of mine uh, uh, yesterday, I think it was, and we were talking about how uh, one of the things that I find in the uh, youth today is that they don't wanna take responsibility for nothing. It's always somebody else's fault. Somebody made me do it. But in this principle right here, unity, we get to decide. He used to say a three chord, a, a three chord, what is it? Rope makes it, it's hard to, it's harder to break than, than it, it, it's hard to destroy. I can't remember how it is, but it, 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 it um, the principle of it is that the stronger, the more, the more you have, the more ropes you have, the stronger it is. Unity. Now, here's the thing. Unity is not unison. Unity is working together to accomplish a common goal. Unison is doing the same thing is at a simultaneously. Now, God didn't create us like that. He created us cre to be creative and innovative. So he would not be uh, requiring us to be unison. But unity on the other hand is what makes us strong as a body. Because we are all working to bring heaven's realities into this earth.
Okay. Unity, number one. Number one, unity can only be maintained in the spirit and not in your emotions of flesh. The first blank is spirit and the last blank is flesh. Unity can only be maintained in the spirit and not in your emotions of flesh. Number two, unity releases empowered production and accelerated promotion. And number four, our destiny is directly connected to our ability to function and stay connected as a body. Our destiny. Destiny has to do with destination, where we're going, where we intended to end up. And it says that it is directly connected to our ability to function and stay connected as a body. You know, Bible says that we are many members, but one body. All the members work together to do what they do. But it's to comprise one body. We may not all have the same assignment, but we all should have the same purpose. And that is to create heaven realities here in this earth. Let's look at Matthews 18, 18 through 20. Somebody want to read it, please? Okay, nobody doesn't have it. I, I have it. Okay. Uh, is there a certain translation that you, you have want? it in the message? That would be fine. Yes, ma'am. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Take this most seriously. A yes on the earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. Glory to God. Now, look, you heard what he said? That word says that us coming together puts the, put the Father in heaven into action. Just coming on one accord. Just coming together. It say it's enough to motivate God into action. If we want to get some things done, and if we want to, what they say, move God, this scripture just said, anything, if you agree, it, when two or three together on earth, when two, when two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my father in hell, we're on earth. We're here in this realm. But we're going to affect what the Father in heaven does. He goes to action. He wants us to be in agreement. In the world, um, uh, in the, in, the, in the world system. You know, the Bible says that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And sometimes we bring uh, those uh, principles that we lived under in the world, we want to bring that in the kingdom. But that don't, this kingdom don't operate like that. You'll bring the standards from another kingdom over into a, Another another king's uh, kingdom. 
It don't operate. This kingdom don't operate like that. Because you know, when in the world you say, well, uh, they if they if they did me, I'm gonna do them back. But over here, we've been called to, to show the world how it's supposed to be done. I have a new, a, a recent revelation about that in the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. We in the world, get in there. You know, get in there and show them how it's done. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So those are our principles for the night. We had three. Can anybody tell me what principle number 12 is? Communication. Okay. I'm sorry. Communication. Okay. Can you elaborate on that for a, a little bit? Yes, communication what? Communication of the kingdom is prayer. Okay, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, ma'am. It's, 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 a, it's a time where we make our request known. It's a time where we, we, we go to the throne of God with boldness and we go on with his word. We go on with what he says and we put it before God. And we're not complaining. We're not crying, but we are approaching God's throne and giving God what he said, giving God back his rights that he's given us. Okay, can you can you distinguish for me what's the difference between communication and conversation? Well, conversation, I'm 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 not trying to get anything done. I'm just having a conversation. I'm just talking. Yeah. In communication, I'm I'm going to God and saying, God, this is what this is what I am, this is what I'm faced with. And your word says this. And I'm expecting you to act on your word. That's right. That's right. I'm a con I'm because I want to accomplish something. I, ain't just I have something to accomplish. Yeah. I'm not just here to talk. I ain't here to <laughs> whine and cry and beg. I'm here. We I want we communicating here. I want to get right. something done. That's right. Who, who any who what was um kingdom principle number eleven? Did y'all miss something? <laughs> Kingdom principle 11. Kingdom principle, Kingdom principle 11. 11. The power is... of the uh, kingdom is to release through spoken word. The power, power of the kingdom. kingdom is released through the spoken word. Okay, so what does that say to you? When we what, what, what responsibility God, you have in that? Speaking the word of God as the kingdom of God. What God say and not what man say out of tradition. Okay. So it is my responsibility to believe, to learn and believe, because the only way I can speak it, I have to believe it. Amen. 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 So that so 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 um the the power is in the word. It's already in the word. We don't have to put the power in the word. The power is in the word. Our responsibility is to get it out, is to release it. We have to release the power that's shut up in the word. And we do that by speaking. And you're right, I agree with that. We can't speak it if we don't know it. Okay, kingdom principle number, what we did? What the, at 13, it'll be number 13. What is kingdom principle 13? What time is it? The strength of the kingdom, the strength of the kingdom is unity. Unity, elaborate on that for me one for uh, a little bit, please, sir. Uh, well, what comes to mind is Paul's teaching in 1 Corinthians 12, how that he says that that there are various and many, uh, uh, a diversity, if you will, of gifts uh, and administrations. Uh, there's one common goal, but now how we all reach that common goal may be, may be different. 
may be different. We can work in unity. We can work together as one body. Uh, uh, we're not working in unison, and I like I like the way that you you know that you put that. We may not flow, function, walk in sequence, you know, but uh, with our different gifts, uh, uh, the way that we administer those gifts. Uh, we are all looking to reach and achieve the one common, the one common goal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as a body, as a body in this kingdom, that is our destiny. That's going to get us to where we're trying to go. Unity. Okay, I'm Dr. Young. If